here we are uh, again. A couple of days ago, I made a video about what I thought was the perfect, oh, hello, was the perfect three-way rail junction. It wasn't. There were all sorts of problems with it. So what I want to do is show you my new and improved three-way rail junction. Uh, the first thing you'll see is me using it, and I'll try to give you uh, a decent sense of how it works and what it looks like to use it and then if you want to stay tuned for a somewhat longer uh, explanation of how it's actually made you can stick around for that so let's go into the rail system and check it out with me here is ijacob9 say hi ijacob9 hi youtube so does that mean i can talk i guess you can talk if you want to all right here we come so i'm not going to do anything we can go to the stronghold or we can go to town. If I don't do anything, the timer automatically sends me to the stronghold. So that's pretty cool. I don't really want to go to the stronghold. I want to show you my awesome rail system. So off we go back in this direction. And from the stronghold, we have the same sort of situation. Automatically, I'm sent to my estate if I don't do anything at all in a moment. And off we go. It changes the rail direction automatically and we go back to where we came from. If, on the other hand, Scary. If, on the other hand, I want to turn right and go to town, I have to press this button in time, and it sends me back up towards town. You should show the town. Eventually we'll show the town. Maybe not this minute, though. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Help, help. I guess we'll show the town now. Maybe we'll show the town. It's dark out, so we're not going to see very much of the town. And they didn't tune in to see the town. They tuned in to see rail. So, down we go. So, approaching the junction from the town. This is not on a timer. This makes me wait. I can go to my estate and turn left. I can go to the stronghold and turn right. Now notice the rail system is currently set up so that if I go in here, that curve will make me turn left. If I want to turn right, the two things that this button has to do is start me moving and flip the polarity of that turn. So I'm going to hit this button and you'll see it turns just in time and off I go into the stronghold. So let me show you a little bit of how I've built and concealed this thing. You see there, there's really no visible redstone except for what is absolutely necessary. These buttons activate the redstone wire under them and all the rest of the circuitry is hidden under this platform and behind this wall. So I'll give you a quick tour of that and then we will go into tutorial mode. All this redstone. So just a quick explanation of what we're seeing here. There's a detector rail that feeds that repeater, setting off the timer. So this is the timer that sets the automatic left turn. This signal goes underground. Uh, it gets flipped a couple of times all the way down here. And you're not going to be able to understand what's happening here from this view. So if, if you want to make sense of this, I'll just try to explain it. This redstone torch is directly under the little blob of redstone that is itself under the button. So basically what happens is the timer sends a signal. If I can just perch right on this. Yeah. It sends a signal that inverts a couple of times and basically does what it would have done if I had pushed the button. So it's a delayed button press. And the reason I'm going underground here is that there is so much redstone here on the surface of this area that I can't really interact with all this stuff. So if you watched the last video, you'll see that I'm using a lot more repeaters here than I did. I'll explain that in the tutorial section. Uh, and that, I think, is really all I want to say about that. So I've got a timer coming from the stronghold that sends me automatically towards my estate, which is that way. And if I'm approaching from the estate, it launches this timer that sends me off to the stronghold. So enough of that. Let's break here and we'll go to a flat world and I'll show you as I build this thing from scratch. So if you watch the last one, I just want to spend a moment to tell you what's wrong with it so that you can make your modifications. I decided that one downhill break as you approach the intersection is not enough. So I've made it two. And the other problem was that a left turn coming from this direction sends a redstone signal down here which then interferes with this and so there's a there's sort of a duplication and this signal goes over here and this signal goes over here and it's just a big mess and it's not right and i'm very very sorry youtube for having shared it with you so let's break all this away and start over 
Okay, so here's our intersection. I mean, clearly you'd have this track going for miles and miles and miles. So in my little test environment, I've got a little place where I can start moving uh, to show you how this all works. So to begin with, I want five flat segments of track approaching the intersection. And after five segments, I want to start heading uphill from the perspective of this uh, junction. So one, two, three, four, five. This starts going uphill, so that means I need a bump here. And we're going to go another bump here and a bump here. So normal track ascending and powered track on its way down. Just to make sure I got that right, I got one, two, three, four, five segments of flat. Same thing here. One, two, three, four, five. That one can stay flat. I put a bump here and I go a little higher here and a bump there. Normal track going up and powered rail coming down. Again, one, two, three, four, five of flat. One, two, three, four, five. That one can stay where it is. We start going up. We go up again. We go up here. Normal track. No, normal track. There you go. Normal track. Powered and like so. The next thing I'm going to want is buttons. As I ride, what's going to happen here is I approach the junction in this direction. We ride up and then we stop right about here. So right next to the second segment of flat, we're going to put buttons at the second level. And I need space underneath there for reasons which will later become apparent. So next to the second segment of flat rail, we put our buttons. Second segment, so if I go here and here, and here. Bleh. The third one goes here and here. And here and here. OK, uh, let's put some detectors. And we'll see what the purpose of those detectors is a little bit later. But let's get them in. One there and one there. So on either side of all three little bumps. The inside detector is to send you along your way coming from the center heading out. So the idea here is I hit this detector rail. This gets powered so that I'm launched up and over and off in my uh, direction. The detector coming in is the timer. So if you want to automatically be redirected one way or another, you come up here, you hit the detector, you stop on the unpowered rail, a series of uh, repeaters will go through their little process, and they will activate whichever button you chose. Speaking of buttons, let's get some redstone under each one. This is where it all begins. All right, so anytime I push any of these buttons, that's how the circuit starts. Now, part of what uh, improves on the design from last time is that I want, whoops, to be able to uh, conceal almost all this redstone. So I'm going to dig out from around here. And, uh, and we'll try to tidy this up later. But I want redstone uh, uh, repeater coming out from this detector. So we'll put that there. I want the redstone to be coming out of there. So we'll put that in like this. I want to be able to send power in to that powered rail. So we're going to put that there. And we're going to put uh, redstone in this direction. So what we have here, this is for the um, this is for the side where we're turning. So uh, if you're building this backwards, stay tuned for a second, and you'll build this on the other side. The, the point of all of this extra complexity is that we've got redstone circuits that we want to not have interact with each other. So I've got a redstone repeater going outward from this dot, outward from this dot, outward not from the dot, but outward from this rail and then inward from here. So let me take a quick nap, and we will resume this part of the circuit and show you how that works. OK, so where was I? I want redstone to come out from this repeater. And we are going to send that redstone into this powered rail. Additionally, if I've got a minecart coming in this direction, I want to hit this detector rail and send a signal to here as well. So the purpose of these two side-by-side -side repeaters is if I hit the detector, I want to light up this rail. And if I hit the button, 
I want to light up this rail. And we're putting repeaters here instead of just a bunch of redstone because as I add additional circuitry, I don't want it to uh, interact with this stuff. The other thing that you see here is I've got this other repeater heading in this direction. That is because when I press this button, not only do I need this portion of the redstone to light up, this, uh, this rail to light up, but I also need to flip this corner so that it turns left at just the right moment. So we're going to have two fully delayed uh, repeaters along the path here. We're going to go underground and we're going to come out back here. So we'll put a repeater here. And so here's how that works. You saw when I put that repeater in, for some reason it flipped it. I don't quite understand how that works. But initially, if it's unpowered, you'll see that we remain in a default configuration turning right, depending on how we arrange this thing. So we put some redstone there, and now we, let's see, how is this supposed to be? Gosh, did it just flip on me? It might have. Awesome. So I am going to have to improvise a little bit here as I work from my notes. This is arranged the, in the opposite direction of what I thought it was. So you'll get to sort of watch me fumble around here. Basically, let me, uh, I'm going to repeat this design on the right side because the idea here is if I am approaching this intersection and I want to turn left, there is no need for me to send any signal to that piece of track. If I want to turn left, I'm done. All I need to do is push the button. My minecart will go where it needs to go. That's not needed. However, on this side, we do need some of that cleverness. So I have a repeater going this way. And we'll put a full delay on that. And I have a repeater coming out from the dot. And I have a repeater coming out from the detector in this direction. And I have a repeater going in to the rail like that. And now let's wire it up. We've got this going like so. So now, if I'm sitting here, I push this button, I get power, and I also get the beginnings of a signal heading in this direction. We're going to go underground to complete this circuit. And we're coming under like this. And I want two full repeaters, fully delayed. And that's what it'll take for me to make that work just in time. So we're now here. We push the button. And at just the right moment, as I'm cruising through here, it turns to the right, and off I go. Let me just complete this portion with the same set of circuits, and then we'll do a quick test. Coming out, coming out, going in, and some redstone. Now, in this situation, if I'm up here coming from this direction, if I want to turn left, I've got to do the same thing. I've got to send this signal over here in order for this thing to flip on me. So I also want to put this repeater there, a full delay, and I can from here connect to this same circuit. So when power comes to this portion, it all ends up back to here. We flip that circuit. So now I'm looking pretty good. Let's uh, just finish this off. This one doesn't have to be quite as complicated once again. So we're going to come out here. We're going to come in there. And I'm going to come out there. And the redstone to finish it all off. Looks pretty good. So one more to go. Let me consider what this has to look like. If I want to turn right, no problem. I don't have to send any signal to this guy to turn right. I'll just turn, no problem. But if I'm over here and I want to turn left, this button has to send a signal to this. So once again, we build out this with a repeater coming out from the detector, going into the rail, coming out from the button and some redstone. There, 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 and there. And again, on this side, if I'm turning left, I do need to send this signal. So we need to put this there with a full delay 
and this is where things get a little bit hairy. What I want to do here is put another delay and come out like that. So whether the signal is coming from here on a delay, oh, that's too many delays, isn't it? One full delay, two full delays, don't need that. That's all you need. So I've got, uh, let's see, on this one, we don't need to make a change. This one we do, so I've got one, two full delays there. I think we're ready for a quick test as soon as I finish this part. Repeater going in, repeater going out, repeater going out, and the redstone to finish. And you see that with the spacing we've set up here, if I had these hills any closer, we'd start seeing interactions between this. So this is why I insist on five flat so that this stuff doesn't start colliding with each other. I'm ready to test. Give me a minecart. Get in the minecart. Oh, that's terrible. Off we go. My first test is a disaster because I've got too many minecarts and I'm terrible at Minecraft. Okay, try again. Oh dear. Go on, all the way, all the way, all the way. Get in, go. All right, so we're stopped. Do we wanna turn left or right? Let's test the left turn. What, what, what needs to happen is we activate the rail we're on and after a moment we flip. And as I continue, when I hit that far hill, I have to hit that detector and that rail has to light up so that I continue on my way. And it's all just so beautiful. And that should look like this so that I can do more testing. Coming from this direction, I don't have quite enough speed. You wanna be hitting that pretty fast. I think this may not work. Let's see if I got far enough along. Yeah, I did. And it turns me left, and off we go in that direction. So it's just fabulous. Uh, gosh, am I done? Well, I'm almost done. The only thing that's really left is if, if it's necessary for an automatic turn in one direction or another to happen, that's where things get a little bit more complicated. My initial thought was all I really need to do is send some signal from a whole bunch of repeaters here and send it into this circuit somewhere. Or if I want a right turn, I do the same thing. I take a signal from this detector and just light up this circuit so that it lights everything up. The trouble with all that is that you end up with interference and it didn't work. Um, I can't remember why it didn't work, but it didn't work. Build it for yourself and you'll see. What I want instead is first you decide which way we want to turn automatically. In this case, let's say I want to turn left automatically. Um, and if I press the right side button in time, then I'm sent on my way in the right side. So we'll put all the delay circuitry on the left side. The way we imagine this is I essentially want riding over this detector to cause this button to be pushed after a delay of, I don't know, say five seconds. So the trick that I figured out is we're going to put a, uh, a light under there, a redstone torch under that, and then we're going to invert it, and we're going to allow this to turn on when this timer expires. This was the only way I could figure to make all this stuff coexist. So we create this light here, and then we have a whole bunch of underground circuitry we're going to have, and hopefully, let's see, since I'm in creative mode, I can fall through the world. That's going to be painful. Um, And that's how we're gonna make that work. So let's, uh, again, we're gonna take a quick little nap and then we'll come back and finish these delay circuits. So here's the plan. The idea here is that let's say I am approaching the junction from this direction. I want to automatically turn left, which means when I hit that detector, I want this button to automatically get pressed after, say, five seconds. If I press this button in time, I'll be sent to the right. But if I don't, I'll be sent off to the left. 
So just before I took my little nap, I placed a redstone torch directly under the block where we have this little blob of redstone, which is itself under the button. So you've got button, redstone, which sends, you know, that's our main circuit. And then under that, we've got this redstone torch. Now, the idea here is I want to invert this redstone torch from this direction. So let me lay down just a little bit of redstone wire, and I want to normally have that lit up. Under normal circumstances, that has to be lit. So let me see if I can find that bit of redstone without wrecking what I already have. And it's going to be down in here, right? Right. So I'm going to come back up in this direction. And the way I'm going to do this, you can see that little piece of redstone down there. I'm going to make a little turn. And from here, we want another torch like so. So now it's in a stable configuration. Let's go back and look at this again. You've got the redstone torch under the bit of redstone, which is itself under the button. And this is the side that's going to light up by default. When nothing's happening, we want to make sure that's dark. So we're sending it a live signal that's coming from here. The next objective is for a signal to come from here after say five, six, 10 seconds, however many seconds you like to invert that guy. So that part's kind of easy, really. Let's just take a whole bunch of repeaters. Let's say, I don't know, 10. And now I want to put all my redstone at least one block below the surface. And I'll show you why that is in a second. So let's clear a whole bunch of space. and start building our delay. And I don't really know. I mean, think if you think about this, you probably don't want to go so far that you intrude into this side, because you may want to do the same thing on this side. So if you're going to have a timer circuit on this side and a timer circuit on this side, plan ahead a little bit and make sure that you don't uh, overdo it here. But uh, let me just have one more. This is not rocket science. We come around here, we put a few of these guys here. And I think I can get away with one more. And let's see, where are we going to make this go? I want to hit that spot down there, right? So we hit a little bit of redstone there and down there and down there. And that should do it. So I hit this detector. Let's actually make it happen. We hit the detector. We start this sequence. When the sequence completes, we invert that guy. We invert that guy. And we are sent along our way to the left. Totally awesome. So really all that's left is the cleanup. Um, let me actually ride it, and you'll see what happens here. push, push, push. Okay, hop in and go. So we hit the detector, we stop, that stuff happens, that button gets pushed from beneath, and I am sent along my way, and everything is awesome. So next, let me just show you why I decided to put all the redstone uh, one layer below. The thing is, if you take slabs, stone slabs or wood slabs or whatever, it turns out that you can put a slab here, and that will not interrupt the flow of redstone. A full height block can interfere with this stuff, especially if you're talking about something here. So think about what's going on here. I push this button, I light this up, and the idea is it causes this repeater to light up. If I put a full size piece of block here, the current, I believe, doesn't flow. Oh, well. It does. But I believe there is a good reason for sticking with half slabs there. So prove me wrong if you like, but that's, uh, that's the way I do that. And then you can build this any way you like, and I won't bore you with the details. We are basically finished. So everything is great. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you have comments or suggestions on making it better, I hope you'll share them. But uh, it's been fun doing this for you, and enjoy playing Minecraft, and I will talk to all of you guys later. Bye!